Welcome everyone to this Blender tutorial series where we're going to be creating this sci-fi robot drone character animation in Blender. Now if you haven't watched the trailer video you can definitely check that out. There will be a card up on the screen and in that trailer video I just talk about what we're going to be doing and what you will have once you finish the entire tutorial series. But let's go ahead and start part one where we're going to be modeling the robot's body. Now I am going to be doing this in Eevee as I said in the the trailer video so I'm just going to change this over to Eevee it should be on Eevee on default but I use cycles so I keep that out on default now you definitely could do this in cycles if you wanted to but I'm going to be doing it in Eevee because I think uh, you guys would probably like that because Eevee renders faster all right so let's just select everything and delete it actually really quick I'm going to turn on my screencast keys so you can see what buttons I'm pressing right down here and then I will just select everything press X and delete it I'm going to press shift a now and I'm going to add the circle and then on the circle settings right here I'm going to change this to like 15 just close that and then I'm going to press one on the number pad for front view I'll tab into edit mode and then I'm just going to press F to fill that face and then I'll press E and extrude it up and make sure it's, you're extruding it up on the Z axis I'll just bring it up just a little bit and then I'm going to press E and S scale it down and then E bring it up we're just making a little kind of lip for the sci-fi detail then I'll press E and S bring it up to about the same width here and then extrude it up even more okay now right here I want to extrude it up and just leave a little area because we're going to be like cutting in on this side of the robot's head to add a little light on his head and then let's go E and just extrude that up okay and then I'll press S and scale it down a bit and then we'll do that again E and S okay and then if that hasn't been filled you can press F to fill that but it looks like there's a face right there okay so there we go now I think that I want the robots head to be a little bit higher so what I'm gonna do is press Z go into wireframe just press B and box select this area and press G and Z bring it up a little bit then I can press B and middle click, deselect this area, and then press G and Z, just move it up a little bit more. Okay, something like that, that looks pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna be adding the subsurf modifier, so I'm gonna go right over here, click on add modifier, and add the subdivision surface. And you can see that it smooths out the mesh. I'm gonna turn the viewport and render levels both up to two, and then I can just shade that smooth. You can go object and shade smooth right there. Now you can see here that the subdivision surface modifier smooths it out and so I want this to be a lot sharper. So what I'm going to do is tab into edit mode, press control R to add a loop cut, just click right here, drag down and then click and that'll sharpen up that edge there. Let's do that a few more times. So I'm going to press control R, click, drag up and then click again and that'll sharpen up that edge. You can see it's a lot sharper now. I'm going to do that again. So control R, drag down. There we go, and then I'm going to add a couple in here just to sharpen up those edges. And I think I'll actually add two in here, so the top lip and the bottom lip, those kind of areas. And there we go. Now this bottom area, I'm going to press three, and that'll uh, go to the face select. And then I'll just click on this bottom face and press I. And I is going to inset it, so it's going to be a face inside a face. Just inset that. And now you can see it's nice and smooth. Now on the top here, you can see there's a little bit of stretching. So to fix this, I'm going to select this face, press I, and make it way smaller. And now that's a lot harder to see. It's really small. Now I do want this curve to start a little bit sooner. So I'm going to press 1 to go to the vertex select. And then I'm going to Alt select this loop. I can double tap G and that'll edge slide it up a little bit. And then I'll also press S, scale it down just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to add that little area where it goes in and there's the little uh, light on the front of the robot's head. So to do that, I'm going to press Control R right here and then click and then just click again to place that. And then you can see that we have this little square here. I want to make this a little bit closer to a square. So I'm going to uh, click on this a vertice, shift, click on this vertice, and then double tap G and just bring it out a little bit. And then I'll do the same thing over here. So I'll click on this shift click on this and then double tap g and that'll edge slide it out so that it's more of a square okay and then i'm going to go to uh, three for face select i'll just select this face 
I'm going to press the period on the number pad just to zoom over to it. And then I think it needs to be a little bit more this way. So I'll just drag it over a little bit with G and move it over. And then I'm going to press I that'll inset the face that so there's a face inside a face. And then I can press E and bring it back in. I can see there's a little hole in the robot's head. I'm going to press control R and just put a loop cut right inside there to sharpen up that up. And I just brought that out to the front. You can see in wireframe mode what I've done. I also want to add another one in the back to sharpen up the back a little bit. So I'll press control R, click, drag it back, and then click again to place that. And now you can see we have a nice little hole for the uh, light on the robot. Now I think this might actually be a little too big. So I'm going to press Z, go into wireframe, move it down kind of like this. And I'm going to press one to go to vertices select and then I'll Press B and box select this area right here. Just make sure that only that area is selected. And then I'll press S. Just scale it down a tad bit. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I think it'll be a little bit better. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So now I want to go ahead and make like that camera kind of uh, glass thing on the front of the robot. So I'm going to press Shift C and that'll set this uh, 3D cursor into the center there with Shift C. And then I'll press Shift A. I'm going to add a circle. This circle, I only want the vertice count to be like eight. And then I will press G, click with my middle mouse wheel, just pull it out there. I'll scale this down. And then I'm gonna press R, X, and type in 90, and then hit enter. So now we're looking at it, or now it's moved to side view. Now let's tab into edit mode here. I'm gonna press E to extrude this out. I will hold down my middle mouse wheel so that it will be constrained to the Y axis. And then I will press E, do that again, and then S, scale it down a bit. And then let's do that one more time. So I'll press E, click with my middle mouse wheel to pull it out a bit, S, make it really small, and then F to fill that face. And then I think I need to move this in a little bit. I'm also going to add a loop cut right here, so I'll press Control R click and then click again to place that. And then I'll just scale it up a little bit with S to smooth that out. All right, now let's add a subsurf modifier. So I'm going to go add modifier, add a subdivision surface right there, smooth that out. I'm going to turn these both up to two and then I will shade that smooth again. Now you can see this looks a little bit weird. The shadow on this one is over here and the shadow on this one is over here. That's because the normals have been flipped. So we need to flip them back. So I will tab into edit mode double tap A to select all of the mesh and then press shift N shift N recalculates the normals. And now that looks correct. And we're not going to have any shading issues. Now this I want this to be a little bit smoother. And you can see right now it kind of looks like a point, it looks kind of like a bullet right now. And I kind of want it to be more round. So I'm going to alt click on this loop, double tap G and just bring it a little bit back to smooth that out. Alt click on this loop, double tap G and S and bring it a little bit down. And then I want to make this smaller. So I'll alt click on this loop and select it. And I want to move it back. So I'll press G Y, and then just move it back a little bit. There we go. That's a lot better. So it's nice and round. Okay, let's move this into position. So I'll press G, move it over S scale it down a little bit, and just put it into position. So it's kind of like I think it's like maybe the camera of the robot or something. I don't know, but it looks pretty cool. Bring it in a little bit, something like that, so that it's coming out of the robot's head. Okay, just like that, that looks pretty good. Now I wanna make like a metal ring going around this. Maybe it's like a protection or maybe it's what you use to screw it in or something. So uh, let's press Shift C again to hop the 3D cursor into the center there. And then I'll press Shift A. I'm gonna add another circle. I'll just bring this circle over here. And then once again, I'm going to uh, press control two. control two is the shortcut key to adding a subsurf modifier. You can see it adds it at two levels. And then what I'm going to do is tab into edit mode. I can just select everything and I'll press E and Z and just bring it up a bit. So now it has some thickness. Okay. And then I want to give it some thickness going in and out. So I'll select everything with a just double tap a, and then I'll press E and S and then bring it in. Now, right now it's scaling it down on all the axes. So it's also scaling it down up and down. I don't want it to do that. I just want it to scale in. So 
while I'm still scaling it, I'm going to press shift Z. And now it's only going to scale it on the X and Y, but not the Z. So just bring it down a little bit, uh, not too big, something like that, probably. And then right now it kind of looks like a, like a ring or a, a donut or something. It's too thin to be a donut, but it kind of looks like a ring. So what I'm going to do is uh, sharpen the edges. So I'll tab into edit mode again, control R, add a loop cut here, drag that out and then click control R, drag that out, place that. And then let's do that a few more places. So I'll press control R here, bring that out and control R here. I want to add some here. I know that there's a lot, but it's going to make the mesh look really cool because if it's really smooth, it may not look very uh, mechanical, you know, or metal. So, okay. So there we go. So I've added loop cuts on all the different sides. I'll just press shade smooth. Now um, I'm using W to press shade smooth. And that's because I use the right click select. Um, but you're probably using the left click select because I used blender before they used left click select right click select was the default. So I just got used to that. You should just be able to right click and then a menu will come up and you can press shade smooth. You can also just go right here and click on object and shade smooth. Okay, so now we want to put that into position right here. So I will go to top view, press G, bring it over, S and scale it down. Let's go one on the number pad for front view, bring it up. And then I will, uh, what I'm going to do to place this into position is double tap R and that'll kind of rotate it around. I'm just going to rotate it, move my mouse until it kind of gets pretty close. You can change your position, just press R and rotate it and then press G, move it over. And then I can go to front right here. Once it's pretty close, double tap R, and then I'm going to hold down shift after I double tap R. That way I can move it around more precisely and I'll just move it into place. I'm going to try to make sure that this right here, that amount is kind of the same for all the other sides. So I need to make it smaller right here. So I'll rotate it this way. Also, I want to make sure that this doesn't come through. So I might want to scale this up just a little bit. Oh, scale up the ring just a little bit. And that looks pretty good. It is a little bit fiddly, but just kind of work with it until it gets there. All right, there we go. So now I want to add in that little light right there. And what I can do is actually just click on this object, press shift D to duplicate it, uh, click with my middle mouse wheel to move it over. And then I can press S scale it down G and just bring it inside there. And then the light is kind of coming out a little bit to the side. So I will press R and Z and just rotate it. So it's rotating more with the angle of the hole. And then once we get into the materials and stuff, we'll add this as an emission light so that it's like really bright. Now let's go ahead and model the side thing right here. So I'm going to press shift a add another circle. We'll bring this circle over here again. I'm going to rotate it on the Y by 90 degrees. And then I want to add a subsurf. So I'll press control two, tab into edit mode. Uh, let's fill this by going F to fill. And then I'll go E bring it over. Now this is going to be going into the side of the robot's head. So this face here, I can actually press X and delete vertices. Oops, not delete vertices, X and delete faces. Cause if you delete vertices, then yeah, it'll get rid of it. But if you delete the face that way, the face is deleted and it just goes to the edge of those vertices. Okay. So now I can press control R bring that out a bit. Now this front thing here, I want there to be kind of a little hole in the side of it. So I'll press three to go to the face select, click on this face and press I to inset, just bring it down to about there. And then I'll press E and bring it in just a little bit, something like that. Okay. Now we need to, again, add loop cuts to sharpen up the edges. So I'll press control R, add a loop cut there. Control R, let's add a loop cut here and here. It's kind of hard to see. So if it's hard to see, you can go into wireframe mode by pressing Z and then moving your mouse over and then letting go of the Z button. And that'll go into wireframe. You can also go into wireframe by clicking on this little button right up here. Okay. So I'll press control R that's pretty good. I'll shade that smooth now. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So I will scale this down, move it into place. Just kind of a cool little sci-fi detail. Maybe it's his ear or something. I don't know. 
Um, I want to scale this up so it's a bit thicker. So I'll tab into edit mode, press A to select everything, and then I'll press S and X, make it a little bit thicker. Now you can see right here, I don't want this to be going through it. So if I, if you see right there, that's the actual hole piece. But if I move it in, now you can see this mesh. So I don't want it to do that. So I'm just going to move it out until it's just like that. And then I'll go to front view. I'll tab into edit mode. I'll press Z, move my mouse over, go into wireframe. Then I'll go to the vertex select so we can select vertices. And then I'll just A to deselect everything and press B in box select this area. And then I can press G and click with my middle mouse wheel and just pull it in a bit so it's not quite as long. Okay, there we go. Now again, it looks like the normals need to be recalculated because yeah, somehow it just got flipped because you can see the shading is over here, but this shading kind of looks wrong. So I will tab into edit mode, select everything with A, and then shift N. That's the shortcut key to recalculating the normals. So there we go. Let's go ahead and make the little antenna. Actually, there's two antennas. Let's uh, make both of them. So I'll press shift A. This time I'm gonna add a cylinder. And then the cylinder here, I'm just gonna turn this down to like eight because we don't need it to be that crazy high detail. I'll press E, bring it up, S, scale it down. Uh, I can press period on the number pad. That'll hop me over to this and I'll tab into edit mode. Um, three to go to the face select, just click on this face and I can press G and Z, bring it down, something like that. We will push it inside the robot's head later, but I just am trying to get the size of it first. So this top face, I think I'll bring this up a little bit. Now, this top face right here, I'm going to press I to inset it, E to extrude it up, bring it up a little ways, and then I'll press E and S, bring it up a little bit, and I'm gonna try to make it the same size here. So just about there, and then I'll press E, bring it up, and just finish that off. So now we have a little bit of cool detail in here. Okay, let's scale this whole thing down, bring it in. And then I wanna make the rest of the antenna to be uh, thinner because it's a little bit thick right now. So I'll press Control R, add a loop cut, bring it up to somewhere around here. And then I'm just going to go into wireframe, one for vertex select, just select this and actually just delete it. So just B and box select this entire area, X and then delete the vertices. Okay, now I can go over here and Alt select this. I'm gonna press E and then S. So that's thinner because yeah, it just it was just a little too thick to be an antenna. And then E and extrude it down. I'll press Z, bring it down like that. And there we go. That looks a lot better for an antenna. Okay, I'm gonna bring this to kind of the back of the robot's head, kind of on the left side. Okay, and then I'm going to, I wanna smooth it out. What you can do is press control one instead of control two, and you can see this is changing. So if you press control two, that's adding a subdivision surface with two levels. If you press control one, that's just adding one level. And then I can shade that smooth. Okay, now we wanna obviously sharpen this up. So I'll press control R, add a loop cut there, add a loop cut here. Let's add a couple more here and here, and then another one here. If you have placed this and you still wanna move it, double tap G, bring it up. Okay, let's add another one in here and down there. And then I wanna add two in here cause that's kind of smoothing it out too much. Okay, and then maybe just one more right up there. Okay, let's save this project because I forgot that I haven't saved it yet. So to save this project, I'm gonna go here and go file and click on save as. Just save it somewhere in your computer. I just saved it as robotbody.blend. Just gonna save that. So now let's go ahead and make that little side thing. Maybe it's a little gun or something on the side of the robot. I don't know exactly what it is. What I'm gonna do is actually use this because it looks pretty similar. So I'm gonna press Shift D with this selected, bring it over, and then I'll press R, Z, and type in 90. Uh, after I type in 90, I'm gonna hit the negative key and that way it's gonna be negative 90 and then I'll press enter. And now it's flipped over to this side. And then let me just bring it forward, scale it down a little bit. I'll press one on the number pad for front view and just bring it over like this. And then it's not long enough right here. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode, alt select this loop, press G, bring it over. And then I'll press E, S 
and then F to fill that face. And then this is a little bit smoother right here, so I'll press Control R and add a loop cut right there. Now right now this is floating, so we need to add something to connect it. So I'll press Shift A and I'll add a cube. It's the default cube's cousin. <laughs> Let's bring this over and scale it down, bring it up, just place it right there. And then what I can do is uh, go inside here and press three for the face select and just select this face and delete faces. And then go into this one, select it and delete faces. So with this whole entire cube selected, I'll press control B and drag my mouse out. You can see it's adding a bevel. And then if I scroll with my mouse wheel, I can scroll that and add a few more, just make like three or something and then click to place that. And then I can shade that smooth. You can see that looks really good. Okay, let's go ahead and make um, some little like maybe guns or some scanners or something right here. Uh, so I'm actually gonna use this same object because yeah, it's already made. So I'll just press shift D, bring it over, scale it down. I'm just gonna have two of them kind of pointing out of the robot's head. Okay, and then I wanna add another one. So I'll press shift D, bring it over, bring this one back a little bit. So this one is a little bit forward. This one's a little bit more back. Maybe those are like some little laser guns or something. Now I wanna make the other antenna. I have an antenna that's kind of coming up and going sideways. So to make this, I'm actually just gonna select this cause we already have it somewhat created. I'll press shift D, click with my middle mouse wheel, bring it over, and then I'll tab into edit mode. Um, what I'm gonna do is add a loop cut right in here by pressing control R, click, and then bring this up. And then I will go to the vertex select. You can also press one and then go into wireframe. I'm just going to deselect everything with A and then I'll B and box select this entire area and then X and delete vertices. And then I need to Alt, hold down Alt and click on this loop here. I'll press G and Z, bring it up. And then I'm gonna press three for side view. I'll bring it up even more, I want it to be higher. And then I will, uh, there's a really cool thing you can do. You can hold down control and then click. And what that's gonna do is kind of rotate this as a kind of little almost like it's a little tube. I'll just press G and bring that out. Okay. And then I want to kind of flatten it down. So I'll press E, bring it out right here. And then I'll press S and Z, kind of flatten it out, maybe rotate it a little bit. And then this, I can just press F. Maybe I'll scale it down on the Z axis a little bit more. All right. Now there's some weird shading issues here. I'm going to press control R, add a loop cut right there to smooth that out a bit. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna scale this up a little bit so it's thicker. And I also wanna move it a little bit more back and a little bit more down. And I think this is actually too long. I think we made it a bit too long. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode. I'm just going to go to side view and I'll go to wireframe and just box select this area. And then I'll press G and bring it back a little bit. Okay, there we go. And then this is also too long, so I will just uh, box like this, G, Z, and bring it up. All right, there we go. This is really starting to look like a robot now. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the neck of the robot. So to make the neck, I'm going to be using a Blender add-on that's built into Blender. I'm gonna to go to Edit and go to Preferences, and we can just enable it. So once you go into the Preferences, you can go to Add-ons, and then you can start typing in Extra, and you can see there's this Extra Objects add-on, just enable that. And then when that's enabled, you can press shift A. And when you go to the mesh, you can see there's all these different things. So there's like bolts, there's diamonds, there's a teapot, simple star, there's pipe joints. But what I wanna use is this gear. So if I click on gear, you can see it adds this really cool sci-fi looking gear thing. So I'm gonna be using this as the neck of the robot. So I'll just scale it down to about there, maybe press G and Z, bring it down a little bit, something like that. Okay, and then I wanna smooth this out. So I'm gonna use that bevel thing again instead of adding a subsurf because then I'd have to add loop cuts all over the place and that would be pretty annoying. So I'm just gonna use a bevel again. So I'm gonna to go to top view by pressing seven on the number pad and then I'll press Z to go into wireframe. We'll tab into edit mode. I'm just going to press A to deselect everything 
make sure you can see this whole thing. I'm going to press C and C is going to bring up this little selection thing. It's a circle here. And if you scroll with your middle mouse wheel, you can change the size of it. And then what I'm going to do is just click on each area. Make sure you don't have anything else selected except these little areas. So I don't want inside there. I don't want that to be selected. You could hold down your middle mouse wheel and click, click with your middle mouse wheel and deselect something. And then if you want to select something, just regular click and select that. So I'm just going to go along here, select these different little uh, teeth to the gears. I think they're called gear teeth. Okay, there we go. And then with this selected, I'm going to press control B, just add a bevel right there, something like that. And then I'll press shade smooth. And there we go. Now it's nicely smoothed out. Now you can see right here, there's a little bit of shading issues. We're probably not going to see that, but just to fix that, I'll press control R click and then bring that out. And then also, I think I might as well add a loop cut here. So I'll press control R click and then drag down just to make that look a little bit nicer. Okay, so now we've finished the head and neck of the robot. We're gonna be doing the body of the robot now. So I'm going to actually click on this to select it. I'll tab into edit mode, and then I'm just going to Alt click on a loop here, this loop right here. Um, I'll press Shift D and then Z and bring this loop down. And why I'm doing this is because I want it to be the same size. So now that I have that brought down, I'll press P and that's the uh, shortcut key for separate, and I'm gonna click on selection. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna make everything that's selected be a different object. So I'll just click on that, and there we go. Tab back into object mode, and then I can just click on this one and tab into edit mode here. Actually, I'm gonna go back into object mode and just bring it up a bit. So I'll bring it up right above the gear, and then I can just go into edit mode and press F to fill that. All right, so now in edit mode, I'm gonna press E, bring it down, bring it down probably about this far, and then I'll press S, just scale it down a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna press Control R, add some loop cuts here to sharpen up the edges. I'll press three to go to the face select and just select this face and press I to inset it. Okay, maybe up here too, click on this face, I to inset. And then uh, once again, the normals are flipped. We need to recalculate those. So I'll tab into edit mode, double tap A to select everything and then press shift N. And there we go. Then I'll just shade that smooth. Okay, now I wanna add in a little lip right here, kind of like on the top one. I wanna add that in down here. So I'll press control R, add a loop cut here, control R, add another loop cut here. This is where I want the lip to be. And then I will go to the face select and alt click right here. And then I will press E and S, bring it down. And then once again, I don't want it to be scaled on the Z axis. So I'll press shift Z and that'll take that out. And I'll just scale that down a little bit. Okay, and then we need to add loop cuts again. So I will press control R, add a loop cut there. Control R, add another one there. And another one here, another one here. And I guess I'll add two more here and here just to make sure that's really nice. Okay, there we go. That's basically the robot's body. I'm going to add a little bit more detail though. And then we'll be adding some cool like sci-fi jet kind of thing because the uh, robot drone is kind of like floating. So it needs some sort of like air vent or jet thing to like propel it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some little plates. I want some little like plates in front of the robot and on the sides. So I'm gonna press Shift A. Actually press Shift C to make sure that your 3D cursor is in the center and then I'll press Shift A and we'll add a cube here. Now without moving this, I'm gonna tab into edit mode and select everything and scale it down, move it over. And because we are doing this in edit mode, we're moving this around in edit mode, the origin point, which is that little orange dot, that's gonna be in the very center. And that's important later because I'm gonna be uh, mirroring it to the other side. So now I'll press S, bring it down. Let's just uh, move it inside there. I'm gonna press three for side view and I'll go into wireframe and just rotate it just like that. And then scale it up a little bit and bring it down in. Now, right here, it's going into the mesh. I want this to kind of rotate around with the body. So I'll press Control R, 
add uh, two loop cuts. So how you add multiple loop cuts is you scroll with your mouse wheel. After you press control R, you can scroll and make two, click and then just click again to place that. And then I'll press G and click with your mouse wheel and pull it out a bit. Okay, now I wanna add a bevel to these edges, but I don't wanna add a bevel to these edges because I want this to be smooth all the way around, but then I wanna add a bevel here. So what I'm gonna do is press two and that'll go to the edge select and then I'll just click on all these edges, hold down shift to select multiple edges. And then now that those are selected, I'll press control B and just add a bevel right there and then just shade that smooth. And then I'll press control two to add a subsurf and you can see that that's being smoothed out. So I'll just add a loop cut right there and a loop cut right there. And then also two more loop cuts, one right here and one right here. Okay, there we go. So now we have a little plate. I wanna scale this down just a little bit, maybe rotate it a little bit. Okay, now I want to put this on the other side. So I wanna have one here, one here and one here. So to do this, I'm going to, with this object selected, click on add modifier and we're gonna add a mirror. And now you can see, uh, actually you can't see it, that's because we need to click on Y, turn that on, you can see now it's on the other side, and I'll turn off X. So now I want this to be on the other sides too. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift D, and then right click to place it back to its position. I'll press R and Z, and then type in 90, and then enter. So now we have these four little plates on the body of the robot. Okay, let's go ahead and model this bottom area. So I'm just gonna click on this, press Shift D, and then click with my middle mouse wheel, I'll bring it down a bit. I'll press S, scale it down, move it a little bit in, and just make it so that it's kind of coming out right there. Now, uh, the detail inside there, I don't actually need all that, like the little lip right there. So I will tab into edit mode. I'll press one to go to vertex select, and then Z to go into wireframe. And then I'm just going to press B and box select the whole thing except that little bottom area, and then I'll press X and delete vertices. So now all we have is this. Okay, and then I wanna add an inset right in there so we can add uh, this like metal grate thing. So I'll press three to go to face select. Just select this uh, face. We'll press I to inset that. And just press E, bring it up, and just bring it all the way up until it goes out of view. And then I'll press X and delete faces. Now, once again, we need to add some more loop cuts. So just press control R, add some loop cuts right there. And then I want to add a little grate inside this. And before I do that, I think I want this to just be a little bit bigger and also a little bit farther up. Okay, there we go. So to add this grate, I'm gonna press shift C to make sure that this is in the center of the scene. And then I'll press shift A. And once again, I'm going to use that extra objects and I'm gonna go down here to extras and I'll click on honeycomb. Now I added the honeycomb right here so it's a little hard to see, but if I go into wireframe with a Z, you'll be able to see it better. And then on the honeycomb settings right over there, uh, you can see that there is the number of rows. So I'm just gonna turn this up and turn this up. And then once I move the honeycomb, we're not gonna be able to edit this. So just get it how you like. I'm just gonna do something like that and then I'll scale it down and press G and Z, bring it right down there. Now this is too big, so let's just scale it down. Just make it the detail size that you want. So I'm gonna make it something like that. Okay, now I want this grate to be on the inside of it, but I don't want it to be out here, obviously. So to fix this, I'm gonna press seven to go to top view. I will press Z to go into wireframe. I will tab into edit mode, and then I will press on this to go to the vertex select. You can also press one on your keyboard. I'll press A to deselect everything. We're gonna press C to go to that circle select again, and I'll use my middle mouse wheel and bring it up. And then I'm just gonna go to about this big and click to select the ones that we want to still be there. I'll go over here, go back out, and you can see that it only has the inside of it selected. And then I don't want to delete this, I wanna delete everything else. So I'm gonna press Control I. Control I will invert the selection. So now we have everything else selected. And then I'll press X and delete vertices. Okay, so now to give it some thickness, I'm gonna tab into edit mode, select everything, and I'll press E, bring it up. 
Okay, and then I'll double tap A to select everything, zoom way in pretty close and press control B. And that is way too detailed of a bevel. So I'll just scroll my mouse wheel down until there's only one bevel. Just make it really small, but it will help for the shading. Okay, and then press W, shade smooth or go object and shade smooth right there. All right, now we have that cool sci-fi look to it. So this is gonna be it for part one of my complete robot sci-fi tutorial series. So go ahead and click on part two. It's gonna be up on the screen and a link will be in the video description. So I hope you enjoyed this first part of the tutorial series and I'll see you in part two where we're gonna be creating the arms of the robot.